You're watching Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. As we have an update from joint practices for your Seattle Seahawks in Nashville, Tennessee, as they squared up with the Tennessee Titans. As you could tell from this photo right here, the Seahawks had a pretty good visit the last time they were in Tennessee against the Titans. Got the win uh, on Christmas Eve against Tennessee. Now, Let's see how they stack up as both teams have brand new head coaches, Brian Callahan, Tennessee, Mike McDonald in Seattle. We will tell you everything we've learned from joint practices so far coming up in just a bit. Speaking of, with this being joint practices, I thought this was more than fitting to do this today. If you're excited about the Seahawks actually doing joint practices for the first time in my lifetime, more on that in just a second, spam 420 in the chat. I felt like this was only right to do. If you love the idea of joint practices and the Seahawks taking part in this finally for the first time in a long time, spam 420 in the chat. We'll get started with today's show. The Seahawks wrapped up training camp this past weekend. They held a practice back in Renton on Monday, traveled on Tuesday to Nashville, and began their series of joint practices with Tennessee today. The first one was on Wednesday. The second will take place on Thursday, a day off Friday, and then they'll have the preseason game on Saturday against the Tennessee Titans. And as a result of the joint practices, the starters will likely not see much playing time, if any at all, according to Mike McDonald, in the game coming up on Saturday uh, there against Tennessee. And for folks at home to provide context of how just rare this is of the Seahawks doing joint practices. This is the first joint practice that the Seattle Seahawks have been a part of since 1991. That's a long time, folks. So this is unusual territory, but it's refreshing. Smitty was talking about, and I totally agree, just a few moments ago before we began taping this segment, I see all these other teams doing joint practices, and I get jealous. Like, that sounds awesome. And now we get to see it firsthand. So with that, let's go ahead and get started and begin with Byron Murphy. Because, of course, we're starting with Byron Murphy. It has been the summer of not just Jones, but Byron Murphy as well. He shined again at joint practices. He was great in the matchup against the L.A. Chargers on Saturday. And according to reports, he looked pretty good in the joint practices with the Tennessee Titans. Greg Bell of the Tacoma News Tribune tweeting out the following this morning. Byron Murphy (coughs) picking up here in Nashville like he did to the Chargers last weekend in L.A. Seahawks rookie defensive tackle swimming Titans offensive lineman Andrew Rochip and Daniel Brunskill with moves so quick they barely touch him during one-on-one pass drills. Man, uh, I love to see that from Byron Murphy. Just picking up right from where he left off Saturday And now, Byron Murphy, think about this. He began training camp when they released the depth chart as the Seahawks' uh, backup defensive lineman at the defensive end spot from that first depth chart that was released. And the way that he's been playing in training camp, in joint practices now, the preseason, if he keeps this up, it's going to be hard to not start Byron Murphy week one. I think that's the type of impact that he's putting together, the way that he's performed at this point looking like an impact player and a difference maker for this defense. And not just when you talk about what he can do to get after the quarterback, but to stop the run as well. I like what I've seen from Byron Murphy so far. Let's ask you now, will Byron Murphy start week one for the Seattle Seahawks? Type Y for yes and for no. Why in the comment section, let us know what you think. We're going to be live here on Seahawks today, this Saturday night for the second preseason matchup when your Seattle Seahawks Square up with the L.A. Chargers. Don't miss out on it. Our coverage begins at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Kickoff at 4 o'clock. We'll be live with an hour-long pregame show. Then react to the game in real time. Have a party on hand. Big Tex is going to be here. You will not want to miss it. Subscribe now for free. Stay up to date with your Seattle Seahawks each and every day on the channel. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV. We'll see you then. So one of the things that's interesting about these joint practices is seeing the ones take on the ones because we don't always get to see that in the preseason. And Rick Wollin had himself a day on Wednesday squaring up against Calvin Ridley, one of the better receivers in the National Football League. And Wollin, it was his day. He straight up owned 
Calvin Ridley. I mean, Calvin Ridley was basically calling him daddy. I mean, like, that's how well he did facing Calvin Ridley one-on-one. This tweet coming from Feel Like Mafe, uh, Shadow tweeting out, Calvin Ridley is just having a hard time getting open on Tariq Wollin. Hashtag Seahawks, hashtag tighten up. It was a great day for Wollin on a really good wide receiver in Calvin Ridley. And what have we told you about Rick Wollin? That when it comes to man coverage, one-on-ones like this, last year there was no better corner in the National Football League than Rick Wollin. According to PFF, he had the best uh, man coverage grade of any corner in football. And so for him to do this against a, a, a very good receiver in Calvin Ridley, to me, is not surprising. And it goes back to what we've talked about with Rick Wollin, of that he's looking to have a bounce-back season that after a down year last year, he's trying to get back to form from his rookie season. I think he'll even be better than what he was as a rookie. And the tackling, which was an issue last year, that's something he's worked on. He's put an emphasis of improving, and Mike McDowell's been after him about it. I think you're going to like the results from Rick Woolen or from, from Rick Woolen here in 2024. Do you believe in Rick Woolen? Are you all in on what he could potentially do for this Seahawks team this year? Type B for believe, D for don't. Weigh in, let us know. Number three on our joint practice takeaways, Jamal Adams, former member of the Seattle Seahawks, was squaring up with this Seahawks team. Uh, Also, Quandre Diggs, of course, former member of the Seahawks, both in Tennessee now. And Jamal Adams was a little fired up, and things got chippy a bit going up against his former teammates. And here's some of the reports uh, that – went out on what Jamal Adams was exactly doing there. Uh, This tweet says the following, and just like we expected, former Seahawks and current Titans player Jamal Adams stoking the flames, yelling, you ain't ready, to the entire Seattle sideline. Greg Bell saying this, Jamal Adams wrestled Seahawks linebacker Kenneth Walker to the ground on the first play of 11-on-11 here in Nashville and let his former teammate know it was him. Then he didn't play much after that. Hasn't practiced much so far in Titans camp, which – What I'm told has been generally soreness. Hmm, Imagine that. And then our friend Bob says the following. No fights yet, but more than a little talking from Jamal Adams, he led a charge off the bench to celebrate at midfield when a Titans gunner beat a blocker to get in position to blow up the returner there. Look, typical Jamal Adams, right? All talk and no action. This guy does a lot of yapping, but the results aren't there. And... If I'm the Seattle Seahawks, I know that there was whispers about Jamal Adams potentially coming back to Seattle and playing the linebacker position, but he wasn't down for that. He didn't want to be the pass rush boy is what his agent said. And I got to say, just seeing that, it was a reminder to me, yeah, I'm glad Jamal Adams is gone. I'm glad that we don't have to deal with that anymore, that here he is yapping, he's injured, he's not on the football field much, doing all that talk, but no results to back it up. I mean, it's typical Jamal Adams. I'm glad he's the hell out of here. And today was just another example of, man, what what a relief it is that Jamal Adams is a member of the Seattle Seahawks. Who is a winner from Seahawks-Titans joint practice? We've talked about a couple names so far. I've got a couple names that we'll talk about as well before we wrap up. Weigh in, let us know in the comments section. Give me a name that comes to mind that is a winner. We got Byron Murphy jerseys on sale now. Chatsports.com slash Murphy. Add a nine to that one. And we have men's and women's options. We have the home jersey, road jersey, alternate uniforms as well. And free shipping available. Go to Chatsports.com slash Murphy to get yours today. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. That's Chatsports.com slash Murphy to get yours now. Let's talk about George Holani, the UDFA who the Seahawks signed from Boise State, is competing to make the Seahawks 53-man roster, played very well in the first preseason game, and as a result of his efforts, he has been rewarded with first-team efforts, folks. Uh, First-team reps, rather. Here's more from Bob saying the following. George Holani has consistently worked with number one offense – along with Kenneth Walker, Kenny McIntosh with the twos. So maybe a little depth chart change. Charbonnet is not practicing. So to me, that's interesting. That tells me that we have a legit competition at this spot for Seattle. 
uh, when it comes to this RB3 position. When you look at McIntosh there, when you look at Holani, McIntosh, of course, we didn't see a whole lot of last season uh, with the injuries that he dealt with, and Holani's come in. He's played pretty well, so a good mix between these two, and, you know, who knows? We don't know for certain if the Seahawks are going to carry three or four running backs on this roster, but at the very least, you have legit depth. You have competition for this role. Iron sharpens up iron. Competition makes people better, so for me, I, I like it that both these guys are competing hard. May the best man win. What's your confidence level in the Seahawks running back? Scale it for me, one through ten. How you feeling about this group? Weigh in and let us know. Last on this list, let's talk about Devin Witherspoon. And as much as we've talked about Devin Witherspoon this offseason, as good as he's been, today was not Devin Witherspoon's best performance. He struggled a bit. Uh, Sam Phelan, who covers the Titans, had this to say. Seahawks cornerback Devin Witherspoon saying, I'm trash, man, repeatedly after getting beat by Titans wide receiver uh, Kiarius Jackson in one-on-ones. Look, sometimes it's your day. Sometimes it's not your day, and that's fine. Devin Witherspoon had one bad practice, and it happened to be in these joint practices. Personally, I'm not worried about Devin Witherspoon having one down day because we know that Devin Witherspoon's going to be good, that he's going to have a big season, he's going to turn things around. So I'm, I'm not overly concerned. It's human nature. He'll be fine. Folks, thanks for joining us here on this edition of Seattle Seahawks Today with the latest from Seahawks Titans joint practices. If you made it to the end of today's video, that means you're a real one. And by the way, before we sign off on this one, Smitty, go to me full screen real quick. For those of you wondering, since you made it to the end of today's video, you may be asking, what's with this shirt? Well, I had to salute my guy, Dale Earnhardt. Raise hail, praise Dale. This is a, a, a Dale Senior classic. Damn, I'm good. I'm feeling good. Seahawks are feeling good. Hope you're having a good day, and we'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.